I messed up by taking my wedding ring off at the gym. Original post. I have just recently arrived home following this fu. I, a very happily married 36 male with a small herd of children, have been going to the gym in my little town since November 2022. I always go after getting the kids to bed, which generally puts me there around 8:30 p.m. The gym I go to has two rooms. One has cardio equipment, ellipticals, treadmills, bikes, etc., while the other room has free weights and various other torture devices. My routine begins the same every time, with 9.1 to 9.5 miles on the bike, which leaves me in a state similar to that of a walrus that has just managed to pull himself onto an iceberg, very wet and breathing heavy. This process takes me to about 8:55 p.m. I enjoy hitting weights at this time because the gym is often, though not always, empty, and it leaves me to grunt and groan in peace. Tonight, the gym was not empty when I entered the weight room. Now, I mentioned that I have been going to the gym since early November. In that time, I have gotten used to the people that do spend time in the gym past nine, and this person was new. Not a big deal. She had brought her own yoga mat. The ones in the gym are blue and red, and this one was tie dyeish. And she had her phone set up on his stand. I assumed she was making a video. Both of these observations were made as I walked down to my trusty bench to start my bent over rows. I grabbed my dumbbells and sat down to continue my ritual. This was the messed up. I always remove my wedding ring before I lift and tuck it in my right sock for safekeeping. If I try to wear it, it digs into my hand and makes things most unpleasant. So I start grunting out reps with all righty and just nicely switch to lefty when I feel a tap on my shoulder. I stopped what I was doing and turned to see new girl standing behind me, sporting a menacing glare and wielding her iPhone. I popped out my earbud and asked what was up. The following conversation is as I remember it: Me, hey, what's up? New girl, you're disgusting. Me, excuse me. New girl, you saw me in here and took off your ring, planning on chatting me up. This is a little paraphrased as she swore a little too, and I wasn't taking perfect notes. Me, what? New girl. You're gross. Me? Okay. I proceeded to put my earbuds back in and get to work, while she stormed to the other side of the gym and started packing up her stuff. I watched her head for the exit while I was resting between sets. Anyway, I'm rowing away, and out of nowhere, I'm blasted with a cascade of liquid, which leads me to drop my dumbbell and spin around to see what's going on. There's new girl with her recently emptied pink yeti screaming at me. I'm assuming for being gross. It was unclear as I had my buds in still. I remove my earbuds so I can understand her, and she storms away. I think the highlight of the exchange is that my gym shirt now smells like vodka. Do most people drink at the gym? Am I doing this wrong? I'm home, showered, and explained why my shirt smells like I've had a raging party to my wife. We've both had a good laugh. If I see new girl's video on social media, I'll be sure to share it here. I don't know who she was, but it's a pretty small town, so it might pop up. Cheers. Now for the top comments before reading the update. If I come across this video on TikTok, I'm expecting Joey Swall to stitch it. I would probably file a complaint to gym management. You were minding your own business, and she made a mess over nothing. Hundred percent when she sprayed vodka onto you, this turned into an assault. I'm surprised at your restraint. I would have gone running after her and walked her right up to the gym staff and explained what happened so that she could be kicked out of the gym and embarrassed. People are strange. It's very common to not wear your ring to lift. I never wear mine to the gym at all because it gives me calluses, and I also don't want to scratch it. You didn't mess up. She did. Sorry, someone was so rude to you. I didn't take off my ring while I was kayaking, and boy, did that give me the quickest blister ever. I never wear mine anywhere near the ocean. Lol. I can't imagine it slipping off my finger into the abyss. I have to address the most glaring thing as a jeweler, who also did bodybuilding for many years. Do not wear your ring to the gym. Do not wear your ring to the gym. Do not wear your ring to the gym. First, ring avulsion. The risk is just way too high. If this doesn't freak you out enough to not wear it, then you're on your own. I can't help you. You wouldn't drive your expensive car through rocks and mud. That's what the gym is to your ring. It damages your bed, and you lose metal over time. You're chipping your stones. And yes, your jeweler will make money every time you bring it in to repair. So you're essentially wasting money, ruining your really nice ring, and risking serious injury. Please invest in silicone band. Opi, if I were you, I would report her to the gym because not only did she assault you with vodka, but she did so mid rep. Not only could you have gotten hurt, 
but the fact that no one else was there means that you could have been left there for hours without help. Oof, this as well. I've reported people for horsing around a weight room before and feel no remorse. You could seriously injure or kill someone. Now for the updates. Well, this got a lot of attention. So I had emailed the gym owner last night at the request of my wife, as she feels the same as many of you that this lady could be dangerous to others. He has already emailed back. Apparently, a new girl received a ban early 2022 for aggressive behavior with another gym patron. Owner is going to call me later today for some follow-up. I will definitely look into the silicone rings. Thanks, everybody. Final update. I had initially planned on responding to a bunch of the comments, but there are just so many. Anyway, new girl's previous aggression was verbal. The gym owner has deactivated her key fob and placed her on permaban. He has also called a few of the smaller gyms in the areas to give them a heads up. Super cool dude. Thanks everybody for the thoughts and advice. I know I've let a bunch of you down by not pressing charges, etc. But I also know I have made many of you proud by completing my cardio after lifting tonight. Before I left for the gym tonight, my wife recommended a raincoat for protection. She's the best. That's all for now unless the video surfaces. Cheers! When I was a kid, my entire paternal extended family was at my grandparents' house for a get-together. Not long after my grandfather returned from the hospital after a heart attack, and my grandparents had needed some help with a bit of outside work. No problem, everyone helped out, and we were done in like 30 minutes of that. Before we all got started, my mom and dad took off their wedding and engagement rings because the stuff we were tackling was a little messy and could result in them losing their rings. My narcissistic aunt and spineless uncle proceeded to make fun of my parents for taking care of their precious possessions and got right to work. Acting like my parents weren't helping them and taking off their rings had taken two hours instead of two seconds. Anyway, we all finish and go inside to hang out slash eat lunch. My parents have both put their rings back on by this point. Halfway through lunch, my youngest cousin notices that neither of his parents have the rings. Cue my psycho aunt absolutely losing her damn mind, blaming my parents and forcing everyone to go outside and dig through all the at least 18-yard bags of gross, sludgy, and decaying leaves to find the rings. We didn't find them, and they sent my parents the bill for their new ones. Some people are just too self-centered to properly function in society. Please tell me your parents' response was the same as your username. Please, word for word. I needed to be. No, they were much more polite and tactful about it. Actually, lol f no was my response to one of my cousins when they brought up me apologizing to my aunt six months after I cut her off for being crazy and horrible. Though I had the emoji in a text as well. Wait, was this woman chugging vodka at the gym? My dad has an ex who would put alcohol in her grandkids' sippy cup and drive because no one questions what's in a sippy cup. End of that relationship. Now, I'm rethinking if every time I take my rings off at the gym, that there's someone taking it the wrong way, and not that lifting while wearing rings is not a good idea. I don't know. I am creep alert from bad experiences in the past, but if I saw some random dude taking off his wedding ring and then settle in to do gym stuff, my immediate reaction would it be, oh my god, what trash. The gym patron clearly had a screw loose or way too many the wrong places. Last story. I moved out and took everything. Original post. It became apparent to me last week that my roommates were trying to drive me out of the house to get one of their boyfriends in on my lease. When I told them I wanted to stay, they started staging incidents slash messes around the house so they could yell at me for them. And it all came to a head when they called a meeting with me two days ago. One of them had to hold the other back as she screamed at me that she hated me and that I was not welcome in the building. They proceeded to tell me that I contributed nothing to the house and wasted their space, and that they had gotten in with the landlady and convinced her to not renew my lease in June. I told them I'd talk to the landlady, and when they said they were the heads of the house, I left and went on with my day. I spoke to the landlady and she acknowledged that they were out of hand, and while she had given them the power to not renew my lease, she also said I could move out whenever and not pay for a single day I wasn't there. So yesterday, when my roommates both left to visit family, they are sisters, I immediately called everyone I knew and vacated the house of everything I owned. I took the curtains, the rugs, all the cat toys, and even the cat tower that I had made with my mom. I took all of their things off my shelves and other furniture and stacked them in the middle of the now nearly empty living room. I snapped pictures of everything, handed the keys to the landlady, and immediately left. They won't be back to the house until tomorrow. 
I blocked them and everything, so I won't get any angry messages. But I'm sure their faces will be priceless when they come home to a half-empty house, with hundreds of dollars in storage and furniture gone. So much for me not contributing anything to the house. Now I actually don't. They also have to find someone else to take up the lease till boyfriend can move in when June comes around. Or they have to pick up my rent. Feels pretty good. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Get a lease release in writing from the landlady, including the exemption from rent. Cover your back. I have a text from her saying she exempts me from rent as soon as I leave. A screenshot with her name isn't as legally valuable as a screenshot showing the actual phone number at the top. It's usually recommended to delete her contact info, at least temporarily so it shows the number versus the name if you need to use a screenshot of the text for legal reasons. It is on Facebook message so I can't get it with her number on it, I don't think. Good for you for not putting up with that nonsense. Post back with a text if they contact you. I will. They're going to try and claim I stole things or say I made a mess of the house, but I intentionally took photos of everything before I left and had my landlady do a walkthrough of the house and my things with my mother, who backed me up in what belonged to me. Your landlady seems excellent. It's hard to find reliable landlords nowadays. Well, it is horrible that she's letting the tenants essentially decide who can and can't renew leases and bully other tenants out of the house. But I am grateful that she was understanding of how unstable they had gotten and she was willing to let me out without any financial repercussions. Who says she plans to renew their lease? You got lots of warning and time to be able to move out on your terms. She has to let tenants stay through the lease, but she can choose to let them know a month beforehand that she doesn't intend to renew. Less time for them to make a mess of the place, and they might want to break the lease early if they have to pay your share, which would save her the hassle. Edit. I didn't realize so many people would have wanted to see their reaction. While I have blocked them for my mental health, I am sure they will try to reach out to harass my friends. If they do, I will absolutely be posting an update for y'all. And now for the update. It took a while for things to settle down, but I'll just post a quick update on how everything is going. I emailed my attorney asking if the screenshots I took of my landlady's text saying I could leave with no financial repercussions would protect me if she somehow changed her mind and wanted to charge me rent. He said I was good to go and would be covered by it. A lot of people are asking about whether or not my roommates will actually have to pick up my rent. My lease specifically states, if one tenant is not able to fulfill their portion of the rent, it will be up to the other tenants to make up the difference. I don't know if she will make an exception or not for them. She did tell me though that it will be their responsibility to get someone to lease my room until boyfriend can move in in June. The girls came back from visiting family today, so it is certain that they have seen the empty house now. I haven't gotten any calls from any officers about stolen goods, so I'm thinking I'm in the clear. Considering that I haven't actually stolen anything, they would be filing a false report which is very illegal according to my attorney. And a big one. My boyfriend was pretty angry by the whole situation as he heard the whole screaming meeting where they told me to leave as he was up in my room when it happened, and he has also observed the horrible text and language they have sent and said to me, and confronted both of my roommates online about how they've been acting. They immediately went to their dad and had a cops called. I don't know all of the details, and frankly, I don't want to because I have them blocked as I want nothing to do with them, and I just want my life to go on. But yeah, my boyfriend pretty much had to go to the station and sign some papers saying he'd leave them alone. I'm pretty angry with him for confronting them, but like, the cops? Come on. Anyways, I'm couch surfing until I can get a place. I have two lined up that I'm very interested in, both of which girls who I know and can trust. I think things are looking up, and hopefully this is the last time I have to think about this ever again. If something does happen, I will be updating. Thanks to everyone for the support. It makes me feel really good knowing that one, I'm not a bad person here like the girls gaslighted me into thinking I was. And two, that my suffering did brighten some people's days. Hopefully, if something like this happens to you, you use similar tactics. I would love to hear about it. It was also really encouraging to know that I'm not alone in having roommate issues. It was uplifting to hear other people's stories and how they got through it. Sending lots of love. Can't you just live with your boyfriend? My boyfriend and I have been dating for just under a year, and so we aren't quite ready to move in together. He also has a great place and good roommates, so I don't want to mess with that. He has given me a place on a couch though, as I wait to find a new place to live and I'm incredibly grateful. 
I love it when people seem to forget that their house is stocked with possessions of the person they're harassing. Either that, or they were stupid enough to think she'd just leave all her furniture if they shouted loud enough. Had roommates like that, I initially moved in with a co-worker. When his lease ended, he moved back to his hometown. So I remained and got new roommates. A couple. Thing is, after a year, my portion of the lease turned into month to month, while they were on a year lease. One day, for no freaking reason, she attacked me physically. And I was already thinking of leaving, but that day cemented it. I would have loved to see their faces when they realized the apartment wasn't furnished like they thought. And this was a huge reason I was looking to leave. They had zero respect for my stuff, and I couldn't all fit it in a single bedroom. But it was all my stuff, LMAO. They came over with a bed, a dresser, and their clothes. That's it. After he got done moving it all, should have filed a report for assault and battery. I did. It led nowhere. I had a roommate who would clip his two nails in the living room and not clean up, spill tea and curry and not clean up, leave black rings around the tub and water flooding the bathroom, along with much, much more. And he tried to say that I was the bad roommate slash woman for not cleaning up after him. Some people are just a special kind of nut, 